If you like this video, please go ahead and consider hitting that like button. Subscribe if you have not already. And please, by all means, share this video. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at the Millennial Farmer map and the MF map, because both of these maps are actually identical with one small caveat. But before that, this video is brought to you by the Myriad. Thank you for being a farm, Aaron. Now, both of these maps can be found over at the FarmingSimulator.com website. We have here the MF Farms map. It is available for all platforms. And we have the Millennial Farms map, and it is available for PC players only. Now, the differences between these two maps is simply that the Millennial Farms map for PC is going to have the Millennial Farmer branding. So it's going to have the Millennial Farmer logo and the Millennial Farmer name associated with the map, both here in the description and then also inside the map itself. Meanwhile, the MF Farms map has been stripped of all branding. So while it is the Millennial Farmers map or the Millennial Farmers farm and area, there is no reference to Millennial Farmer or Millennial Farms on the MF Farms map. Now we are gonna be using the MF Farms map for this particular video because it is gonna be most accessible to the largest player base. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to MF map. This map is based on a real terrain near the city of Lowry in Minnesota, USA. On this map, there are 24 fields from small to big, 41 farmlands, one small forestry site, main farm with starting vehicles and equipment, BGA, traffic, pedestrians, custom crop counter, and a train cell point to take your crops to Glenwood. On this map, you'll find a sawmill, a dairy, a corn dryer, a grain mill, bakery, placeable greenhouses, placeable juice factory, and two custom liquid trailers for the transport of propane. There are selling stations for grain. The shop will take your production goods. There's a bale cell point, a train cell point, two selling stations for your root crops, and a seed silo where you can replenish your seed, fertilizer, and lime. In addition, soybeans are going to grow in rows and produce straw, new crops in rye and durum, durum wheat. We have modified a custom crop calendar, our growth schedule, and snowfall during the winter. Roads will change to a snowy road texture. And, well, there's an interesting treasure hunt on the map if you are so inclined. With that, let's go ahead and load on in. Info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. If you happen to load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, I will tell you that the farms are, or the main farm is completely void of buildings, but you do have starting machinery in both of those game modes. And of course, you do not own any land. The secondary farms do have buildings in all game modes. And if you happen to load this map up on a lower end system, maybe one with integrated graphics or a very, very low end graphics card, I will tell you that you won't have any issues whatsoever in maintaining a nice solid 60 frames per second because I used a system with integrated AMD graphics. And that is exactly what I had. A nice solid 60 FPS all around. Let's go ahead and take a look at that PDA. As we zoom out, we can see our range of fields from small to large, and they are all fairly interesting in the shape. Nothing should be too terribly difficult with respect to a hired helper. We start by owning farmland ID 16, which is the main starting farm that can be bought for any alternate game mode at $146,280. We also have farmland ID 8 and 10 as well at the start, and those are going to be fields 23 and 4 respectively. We have a pig farm at farmland ID 17. We also have a cow farm at farmland ID 25 and a sheep area at farmland ID 22. There is a biogas plant, which is gonna be available to the south of field 10. Now this map does have all the standard crops available to us in FS 22. And as the description said, we also have durum wheat and rye as added crop types. Go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any field or fields 
what is included, then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? Let's go ahead and compare that to our field calculator screen. This is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. You see we have fields that range the size from 1.51 hectares all the way up to the largest field being right around 28 hectares in size, which is going to be field 14. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how that generic soil map is being applied to these fields. We can see our starting fields. Field one is going to be a large hunk of loamy sand with a little bit of sandy loam. Then we have field 23, which is going to be a loam and silty clay mix. And then field four is going to have all four different soil types applied to it. But we can take here and see all of the various soil types that are going to be applied to all the various fields. As you can see, we do have a custom crop counter on this map. We do have the ability to plant wheat, for example, here in early spring. And if we scroll down, we'll see our plant and harvest schedules for durum wheat and rye. With respect to our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our basic crops that are available to us in FS22, as well as our animal outputs of eggs, wool, and milk, and our silage, hay straw, and grass. As we continue down through all the base game production items, we once again do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game productions, again available to us on the map. We do not have the ability to buy bulk lime, but we do have the ability of selling stones on this map down at the shop. With respect to our custom crop types, we have Durham wheat, multiple sell points for that, and multiple sell points for rye. And then as far as our productions go, we have dried corn. Soybean straw, propane, durum flour, rice flour, pasta, corn flour, fine corn flour, apple pie, apple juice, pumpkin, pumpkin pie, apple, rye bread, cornbread, sweet cornbread, lemonade, lemon, pineapple juice, pineapple, orange juice, orange. And then with respect to our farm production pack, we do have the ability to sell our washed root crops but with respect to our platinum expansion we do not have the ability to sell any of the platinum expansion production items now that story will change with respect to our premium expansion because we do have the ability of selling those if you are playing with pumps and hoses we do have the ability of getting rid of our separated manure and if we are playing with straw harvest once again we do have the ability of getting rid of our hay and straw pellets you see, we start out with a modest list of starting machinery. All of it is owned. None of it is leased. We do not have any animal pins at the start. We do have contracts available on this map. We do have the silo system, which is a production here on the map. And that is because we can produce dried corn by providing corn and propane. And then as far as our regular crops, well, it's simply going to be a storage system for all of those. With respect to collectibles, we do have one collectible that is going to be a part of that treasure hunt, which I mentioned. And as far as our first clue for the treasure hunt, well, it's right here at the Millennial Farms farmhouse. Get to Skull Island, and here you'll find a clue where you need to find the money. Now, with respect to the farms being customizable, as I mentioned, in the alternate game modes, this farm is completely void of all buildings which includes the farmhouse, the silo system, and these sheds. Oddly enough, you cannot place the silo system back down. So if you do want to dry corn, then you're either going to need to put your own corn dryer down or make sure you start in new farm mode. That way you have all of these productions pre-placed. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start with the John Deere 8 R2. 410 large tractor as well as the 8R280. We have the Pinnacle 6x4 Mac semi truck. We have the T560 harvester and that is going to be paired up with the HD45X grain header and the C16F corn header. We have a Hardy Rubicon 9000 fertilizer and herbicide sprayer. We have the Load King Distinction triple hopper trailer for our semi. We have the Vanderstan NZ Extreme 1425 Cultivator. We have the Amazon Saitan 15001C Cedar. 
We then have the John Deere 1775 NT planter. We have the ZG25, CGTS 10001 Amazon fertilized spreader. And then we have our header trailer for our grain header. Now, if you are going to apply lime, you will need to get your own lime applicator because this fertilizer spreader will not do lime. With respect to mods and DLCs, this map does have two custom implements. They are the MKS-8 and the MKS-32 trailer, and they have been modified to transport propane. Now, if you happen to be looking for maybe a little bit more realistic way of transporting propane and you are on PC, I will have a link to a nice propane mod in the description below. Now, I want to go ahead and dive into build mode because this map does have some custom things that are included with respect to build mode. We do have some farm sheds that are available. We have a giant vehicle shop that we can apparently place down, as well as multiple sheds. With respect to our silos, sadly, all we have is a silage bunker. We don't have the ability to place the grain dryer back down. We do then have the ability to put down our bulk seed buy point under containers and under tools. We have the ability of putting down a workshop trigger. And then we have our two farmhouses that are pre-placed on this map as well. With respect to production, as the description alluded, there is some custom production on this map and some of it you will have to place down. So we have our dairy, which is pre-placed as well as our bakery that is also pre-placed. But we have a juice factory that is available. And I'm just going to go ahead and plop this down over here. Just so that everyone is aware. That we have put that down. Because we're going to get to a little bit of a production overview. Here in a few minutes. With respect to selling points. We have then a root crop sell point. Which is already pre-placed. But we can place it here as well. And then we have a custom greenhouse. Again I'm placing that down simply for the purpose of showing you the various productions that are available. With respect to our animals, we have all base game animals. Decorations, if we go to others, we do have the neighbor's farm, which are going to be a bunch of secondary buildings. You'll see this farm area here in a little bit with respect to our map tour. But we also have some fences that you can put down, kind of pre-formed fences. And I believe that these are going to be technically associated with some of the other farms that are also on this map. With respect to our ground textures, we have fairly standard ground textures. And then we have fairly standard plants and trees. A look at our production overview. I've gone ahead and bought all the productions that are available on this map, as well as the fact that we put down the juice factory and the custom greenhouse just a little bit ago. We've already talked about the silo system. So we have a juice factory that can be placed on this map. And the juice factory will accept grapes, apples, oranges, pineapples, lemons, and sugar. And we will be able to produce grape juice, apple juice, orange juice, pineapple juice, and lemon juice. All of the previous juices are simply gonna require the associated fruit. But with respect to lemonade, we're gonna also need to provide sugar. Now, with respect to our greenhouses, we have to supply water and manure, and we're gonna have the option of growing lemon, orange, pineapple, apples, or pumpkins. We've got a fairly standard dairy with the ability to do butter, cheese, and chocolate. Fairly standard sawmill on the map. And then with respect to our grain mill, while well, we're gonna be able to make regular flour with wheat, barley, oat, and sorghum, we then also have the ability of making fine corn flour corn flour, durum flour, and rye flour based from dried corn, corn, durum wheat, and rye. Our bakery has been modified to include some new productions. We have the ability of making our bread and cakes like we do normally. We also have the ability of doing sweet cornbread, apple pie, pumpkin pie, cornbread, pasta, and rye bread. And then lastly, we close it out with a biogas plant 
and it's a fairly standard PGA for Farm Sim 25. Now here at the starting farm, we do have our farmhouse with a sleep trigger around the front. As we make our way into the farm, well, we have our silo complex over here to the right. Unlike previous Millennial Farm maps, we don't have the ability to go inside of this little shed, but instead we're going to do all of our tweaking and manipulations of the silo here at this management point. And this is where we're going to be able to either activate our dried corn or just simply use it to store grain. So we have our dump point and our fill point here. And then around the side, we're going to find our propane storage tank. And this is what we're going to need with respect to filling our silo system with propane in order to dry our corn. Now we have a couple of custom machine sheds here on the map. We have our workshop. Now it would be nice to have seen indicator markers here showing us where the workshop trigger actually is, but it appears to be basically the entirety of the inside area here. And then if we go upstairs, there's a little bedroom up here. No sleep trigger. And then a couple other interesting kind of side rooms. Now something I found with respect to this door you would expect the trigger to be right here up at the door, but if you come over a little bit too far to the side, you're actually outside that trigger. You can see that in the F1 menu where we have closed door and then it just goes away. So if you're having trouble opening this door, maybe move a little bit further over here to the left. Now this of course is the juice factory that we just placed down. We have our dump point, we have our pallet icon, and then we have our interactive icon or our juice factory around the side. The greenhouse which we placed, we have our manure here on the left, we have our water, we have an interactive icon inside, and then we have our pallet spawn point. Of course, both of those will need to be placed by yourself. We have a large machine shed located inside of here. And then we have a smaller shed here at the farm. And again, all these sheds can be sold. They can all be placed back down. But the only thing that you can't really place back down here is going to be this big silo system, which is going to also include the propane tank. Now, as far as other farms on this map, well, if we make our way down here to the main road or the driveway, and then further south, south of field seven we have the pig farm now we'll need to buy the pig farm for all of these associated triggers to pop up we have the old farmhouse associated right here now i don't believe that this farmhouse actually has a sleep trigger A nice storage area here for machinery, bales, or other items. We have our manure heap for our pigs. We have our pig drop-off point. There are going to be a total of 150 pigs available for storage here. We have our food trough. And then we do not actually have an icon here. So I want to go and check the animals and it shows we need straw, slurry and food. So we do not need to provide water at all. And then here we have our, another little shed. Now, oddly enough, this mentioned slurry, but I don't really see where slurry is going to come out at. Well, it's actually over here, but it is missing one of those nice floaty blue icons. I would like to see that pop up over here to really represent where the slurry 
fill point is going to be. Now the next farm, we're going to jump over here to the cow farm, which is going to be flagged as neighbor farm. It has a blue farmhouse. And the sleep trigger for the blue farmhouse is going to be around the back. And this is the farm that has all of these deco buildings. You can sell the entirety of these deco buildings in one fail swoop. These do not have any active triggers, but you could, I guess in theory, store machinery in here if you can put it in the open doors. This storage shed is not sellable. It appears to be permanently a part of the map. You have working lights in it. It is not a silage bunker. It just appears to be a nice storage shed for bales or anything else. But oddly enough, this was the only thing I couldn't sell on any of the particular farms. We have our cow area. And again, we've got maybe a misplaced floaty blue icon because this has a trigger. This appears to be, as best I can tell, where your milk fill trigger is supposed to be. And if we look at this, you can see, well, there's a trigger, right? There's a trigger right there, but there's no icon associated with it. And that's because the icon, I believe, is out here. So I believe this icon should be over there for our milk. We have our dump point for our straw and food. We have our slurry point. We have our water trough. And then we have our owl delivery for 140 total cows. We do have a silage bunker located right here. And then that would be the mysterious island for which the first hint was given with respect to how to find the treasure. And oddly enough, there appears to be some sort of structure leading over to the island. But, oh, uh oh, our efforts to get over there have been warranted. There must be some way of getting into that structure. I really wish I knew maybe where the entry to that structure just might be. Now, with respect to our sheep, we have a small sheep farm located south of the cows, which are gonna be located right there, just north of field 17. And something I thought was really interesting with respect to the sheep farm, when I was trying to sell the various things here at this farm, I was successful selling the farmhouse, the barn, the fencing and everything. And I was also able to sell, well, all of these electrical poles and this, uh, this electrical shed. I could go into build mode. I can go clickety clicky and I can say sell and yep, it's gone. I thought that was interesting. So if you uh, if you have issues with electrical poles, well, there you go. That's how you can get rid of them. Now, I don't believe that this farmhouse had a sleep trigger either. So if you do want to use that as your farmhouse, you will need to put down your own sleep trigger. We have our wool spawn point there. We have our food trough, and then we have our sheep, 500 total sheep. They're gonna be available here. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farm, our animal food overview, just to see if we happen to have any custom animal food. And we do actually indeed have that. For our pigs, grain, we have durum wheat and rye also available as food types for our grain, for our pigs, and then everything else other than chickens, so if we put down a chicken coop, we're also gonna be able to feed them durum wheat and rye as well. Now, while I would typically fly all the way back over there to our starting farm, 
I think we're all fairly familiar with where we are at this point. So let's just go ahead and continue on with the fly around portion of this map. Here we have our biogas plant. Fairly standard BGA. Now I was noticing that we do have a little bit of a, a dip in the ground here. So hopefully you're going to be able to farm this land. That might be worth noting. Because we've got a little bit of a defect here in the ground. And well, if you buy this farm or this field, you might want to smooth that out a little bit. If this map does get updated to fix that defect, then you will need to load a new save game in order to see that change. Let's go ahead and fly up the western side of the map. Because we do have some productions up here on the western side. And then we'll make our way across the northern side of the map to the northeast and that's where we're going to find the bulk of the other activations. And then all the way back down, right around wrapping field six, we've got our animal dealer. So over here to our left, we're going to have our bulk seed buy point. We're also going to be able to buy fertilizer and lime from here. So we have our fill station. And then we're going to be able to pick. Interesting. This is actually acting like it is a storage silo and not a bulk fill point. One would think that this was a bulk fill point but it seems to be that we're actually going to get charged to buy product here so let's just try this 200 liters of liquid fertilizer i got charged 264 dollars and now i have 200 liters of liquid fertilizer so this is not a bulk buy point as one might believe it to be this is a very much at your own cost storage silo for those fill types. Hmm. I don't really like that idea. A little bit of a. Repair shop here. Just a little deco area. And then this is going to be our root crop sell point. In order to sell our root crops, we're going to be able to dump our product into there. And they're going to set potatoes and sugar beets. Continuing down the road across the northern part of the map, you see this map is fairly flat. Very, very subtle undulations of the fields. Shouldn't be too terrible or bad with respect to using machinery that might have a bit higher horsepower demand than maybe your tractors have. As we make our way into town, we have our fuel point located right here. And something that struck me as a little interesting, I didn't really see the propane buy point here. Because honestly, I was looking for a gas cylinder where I would buy propane, a compressed gas. Well, that's not how you buy gas on this map. You buy gas in all formats by coming to a pump. So if you want to get diesel, you come to the pump. If you want to get propane, you come to the pump. I know that's not realistic, but that's how it is. So if you're trying to figure out how you get your propane, pull up to the pump and well, I guess grab the blue handle. Is that blue handle? No, it's unlighted. Okay. We do have a rent train trigger located right there. This is a train transfer silo. So we have our dump and fill points here for the train. We have our dump point and our fill point here for the trailer. If we are going to transfer product to and from the train or just use this as a storage medium. 
Oh, what does this say? When using hipper trailers, ensure that you're clear of entrance portals before. Yeah, of course, because you don't want to destroy the building. All right. Across the way from that, we do have our sawmill. So with respect to productions on this map, we have six productions pre-placed. We have the silo system, the main farm, a dairy, a sawmill, a grain mill, a bakery, and the biogas plant. Then we also have a placeable greenhouse and the juice factory, which we've already looked at. We have our fill point for our wood chips, our pallet spawn point, we have our interactive icon, and then we have our dump point for our logs and our wood cell trigger located there. Across the street from that, we have our bakery, interactive icon, dump point, and our pallet spawn point around the back. Here we have a cell point in Lister Tans. Hmm, could this be a nod to a former community coordinator? Maybe. We have our dairy. So we have our interactive icon. We have our dump point. And we have our pallet spawn point. Those playing with the emergency pack. Well, you we do have a farmhouse. Oh, not a farmhouse. A firehouse here. Complete with some nice... Fire trucks. We have our grain cell point at Lowry Grain. The dump station right here. And then we have this massive, massive area. And I just want to see, is this viable? So we can buy this whole area for $355,000. And then we could put additional things here, like additional productions. I do kind of wish that this was maybe carved up into smaller bits so we wouldn't have to buy this huge area for 300 some thousand dollars in order to do that. We have our vehicle shop right next door to our grain dealer. And we're going to have to go into the vehicle shop in order to use the trigger. So there we have our vehicle shop. Let's go ahead and pick up a Mahindra. And we'll make our way over here to delivery area. And we have our dealer trigger. Now, where is the dealer trigger? Because, well, we don't see any actual triggers here. Do we? Let's go outside. So here we have our actual dealer service trigger outside, but we do have to go inside in order to activate that. And then we have our vehicles that are actually going to spawn over here out front. So a decent sized area for our vehicles to spawn in at. That will possibly affect your ability to place some productions here as well. Then right next door to our vehicle dealer, we have our flour mill. So we have our dump point, we have our interactive icon, and we have our pallet spawn point. Let's make our way south to our animal dealer. And while we're doing that, let's talk about our scoring system. So we're going to be giving the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such because we have six productions pre-placed. We have the ability to place down a custom juice factory and greenhouse. So we're going to go and give the map a full point with respect to the ability to sell all of our basing crops, animal outputs, and productions. We are also going to give the map a full point. While we do not have the ability to bulk lime, we do not take off points for that fact. With respect to the farms being customizable, yes, I'm going to go ahead and give the map a full point because the main farm is completely customizable. The other farm areas can be sold for everything. Now, I do know that that one storage shed did remain, but quite frankly, that area is so large, I don't feel that that shed sticking around is that big of a deal. So, again, we're not going to deduct any points there. 
here we have our Lowry Livestock. This is going to be our bale sell point. A nice little auction house here. Now, you know my thoughts on static animals. Then we have static animals. Then we have our dealer trigger for our cows and our other animals located right there. So that, guys, is the map. Now, let's wrap this up with our final two scoring metrics. With respect to buildings where appropriate are using the new texturing technique. Well, I struggled with this one a little bit because I feel that the custom buildings at the main farm were not using the new texturing technique. The textures did just look and appear flat to me from all the various angles and everything, as well as these items here. They just they just felt flat and everything. And then some of the buildings over at the neighbor farm also felt that way. So we're gonna go with 0.5. Then lastly, with respect to trigger in interactive areas being clearly marked. Well, there were a few areas that I would like to have seen additional markings. We're gonna give the map three quarters of a point there. It wasn't too terrible bad in my opinion, but it would be nice to see a bit more formality with respect to like the maintenance trigger here at the main farm and a couple of the other areas that I'd already mentioned. So with that, we're going to give this map a score of 4.25 out of 5. A very respectable score, and I believe this is the third farm sim that this map has made its return. I believe it was first available in FS17, it came back in FS19, and it's here in FS22. Hopefully it will come back in FS25, maybe with a bit more life in farm sim, because, well, it's a little late in FS22's lifespan, but it is nice to see this map has made a return. I'd let me know your thoughts down in the comments below with respect to this map, or maybe with respect to the actual Millennial Farms map, which is basically, again, this map with some Millennial Farms branding. Until next time, happy farming. I think I'm going to get myself some barbecue. What about you? Junior's Barbecue. Let's see. We got loaded pulled pork nachos. Uh, I'm not a fan of that. Pulled pork sandwich. Mm, pretty good. Piggyback. Hot dog. Frito-Lay chips. Coleslaw. No, not a fan. Give me a pulled pork sandwich.